Let's go. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Yes, myself and Sprinkles. Hello. I'm glad you caught on to that. <laughs> and back for another edition of this uh, podcasty type talking absolute crap situation. Uh, this could end up being another three hours. We don't know yet. So strap yourself in, stick this on in the background and um, enjoy, basically. So, Beatles. Um, what have I been up to since the last podcast? Which was just over a week ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, because I work in school, I've got half term off, which is lovely. I have been, I've not like, really kind of done anything that interesting. I went to Bath. Not a Bath, but, you know, <laughs> I went to the town of Bath, which was interesting. You wish um, you'd been to a Bath. <laughs> yeah, or a bath, or in a bath, who you knows? But yeah, that's pretty much me summed up. Not really done anything worth mentioning. Uh, fair enough. I have this week uh, done recording a ton. Oh my then, a ton of new um, <laughs> new reviews that are ready to be uploaded. Trying to upload one a day at the moment. Um, and just still catching up on music from last year, which is quite bad. Didn't realise how bad my backlog actually was. Um, <laughs> I've also um, arranged, uh, without the need, or probably the permission of their record label, um, an interview with Colin, the guitarist for <laughs> Devilman. <laughs> just, just a man called Colin. I've just expected just to end it right there. I've had an interview... <laughs> With Colin. It, it might well be. It might well be. Um, but no, that was a weird one. Because I put up the review for the Devilment album. And about <coughs> yeah. two days later, he actually contacted me on Facebook. And um, said, like, cheers for the review, mate. Um, if you want to do a, uh, an interview, here's my email. Then we'll arrange it. So, it's all done. Yeah. And hopefully that will be happening Thursday night. So, yes. Now, over the last week, have you had a chance to maybe catch up on some music or anything? Uh, no, um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> have I? No, I haven't. I know I suck. I'm really bad at this. Oh dear. We'll get you there, don't we? We'll get yeah. you there. Uh, oh dear. Um, I lead a very boring life, it seems. <laughs> well, how's the festival coming along? Um. Ah. You still there? Ah. I'm there. I'm here. Oh, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> no change there. Uh, I think now Skype was cutting out for a second there, don't I? Oh, okay. No worries. What were you saying? Sorry. Um, how's this festival you're arranging coming along? Um. No comment. Is the best way to. That what good. <laughs> yeah, just no comments. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, we'll leave it at that then. I think. <laughs> well, details to follow very soon, but uh, at the moment, not giving anything away. Well, hopefully, people who've listened to this have checked out your uh, art page at the very least. Maybe giving it a like or whatever. Who um, knows? Possibly stalked you on Facebook. Who knows? Um, right, let's. <laughs> Let's hit some uh, some sort of music news, and unfortunately, you're gonna have to start with something a little bit tragic. Well, very tragic, essentially, and that is that last week, the current I think it was the bassist for Kitty um, was found. Yeah, I, I noticed that it was as soon as we finished the uh, last podcast. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was funny because we were, you were obviously on about Kitty. Well, I don't know something about it, and it was just like clearly oh. I shouldn't talk about bands. <laughs> Yeah, that was um, bit hit me a bit more than it probably did you because obviously I'm a massive fan of Kitty. Well, I say obviously you know that people yeah. listening don't, but um, I've been a f- supporter there since since the first album Spit come out many many moons ago. I think it was 2000 if I remember rightly, and um, sadly only got to see them twice. But uh, hopefully that will change if they do a new album and all that. But who knows what the plans are now? Now that things have happened with um, their current bassist. Yeah, so, it's uh, never nice to hear someone passing away, is it? No, no, it's um, 
it's strange as well because it really did just come out of the blue. So. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, right. Also, uh, in other news with the sites I'm looking at, it's been 10 years, but finally, Maynard James Keenan has finally begun working on lyrics for this new Tool album, meaning there's a possibility we may have a new Tool album this millennium. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, the other day, actually, um, popped up on one of the new sites, yeah. Yeah, it's been, oh, it's got to be about 11 years now since uh, 10,000 Days come out, their last album. And this <laughs> is an unusually long time for them to take for an album. Yeah, but it's that ongoing joke with Tool, wasn't it? When well, the new album being thrown out now. Yeah, but it used to be that way with Nine Inch Nails as well. Yeah, true, true. I've never really got into a uh, Tool though. It was that, they had that one tune on like Kerrang like fifteen years ago. What I forgot what it was called. Excuse that me. One. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly exactly which one I meant. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I kind of got that. It was like quite funky, and I loved it. And then never really got into them other than that. Yeah, it's it's a shame. They were ah. I don't know if I say well or ah, because who knows if they actually exist anymore, considering. <laughs> um, but, oh, very, very good band and well worth getting into. Um, but, obviously, if you're not really into your progressive stuff, maybe you won't yeah. enjoy them so much. So, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, never really kind of... I don't know, I never really kind of get into the whole progressive kind of side of stuff. I kind of... I noticed in the last podcast, there's a lot of things I don't like. I should talk about things I actually do like. <laughs> it might help. Might yeah. Help. Instead of <laughs> sort of coming across with listeners thinking, bloody hell, this woman don't like anything. <laughs> because I'm an elitist black metal person, uh, obviously. Apart, obviously. From the, apart from the Gaga connection. Apart, yeah, apart from Gaga, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Talk about uh, have you seen it? literally as soon as it happened about nine billion memes about the Metallic Gaga thing. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> the best thing I saw. I mean, obviously, I'm not a fan of Metallica at all, but um, James Hetfield's face—he does not look happy that it happened at all. No, see, they've got the performance. I, I don't know. They've got something up of it. I've not seen anything of it yet. It'll be all over YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to try and catch it. Uh, but no, I've not really kind of... I've just obviously seen people writing stuff on the, you know, whatever, <coughs> uh, metal news sites, but not really watched anything from it. Oh, right. The thing is, for the way everything's gone on with it, um, I've not heard anyone say that it's objectively bad. That's the weird mm-hmm. thing. They're just annoyed <coughs> that... This, these supposed bastions of metal who, let's be honest, in at the end of the 90s released two albums that had country songs on them, um, mm. were, had the gall to suddenly start singing with Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit, bit weird. Although saying that, I don't know, maybe hardcore Lady Gaga fans are turning around going, who's this Metallica people? Why is she singing with them? I think, I think like... Yeah, maybe. I think a lot of people who are kind of not into metal, they know Metallica, you know, yeah. they've heard, at least heard of them, because they're such a huge band, aren't they? But I imagine there's quite a few people out there who haven't heard of Metallica. But yeah, it's like, it's like you do, what was it, yesterday I was, um, went past Primark, and they oh, actually yeah. had um, Black Sabbath, um, Slayer t-shirts and effing in the windows. Yeah. And for years it used to just be the Motorhead shirts. So Yeah, of course I have Motorhead, which I saw this the other day. Someone on Facebook um, put up about um, oh, can't believe they've uh, got a Slayer t-shirt in there. What sort of, you know. Yeah, I saw that people. actually, I think. Yeah, like, someone, why are they doing that? Why are they kind of ripping off stuff? It's just like, at the end of the day, you know, not being funny, you, you're in Primark, someone's in Primark, they're going to see it, you go up to Primark, you buy stuff from Primark, you don't just waltz in and laugh at the clothes, well, most people so, don't. I've got to know. say, there's probably some people who do, I mean, the thing is, the people who moan like about, oh, why are they selling these shirts, what they're forgetting is, those shirts are letting other people know that metal 
does exist. Yeah. And, you know, it might get people to check out those bands in a kind of, um, I suppose the word surreptitious way, as it were, kind of influencing them uh, non-consciously. Unconsciously is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I mean, they're massive fans as well, and, you know, you can find those T-shirts anywhere. The one that really confused me, I mean, I can understand... Is it a Cannibal like Corpse shirt? <laughs> yeah, that would be weird for Primark. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what Primark is, if you live outside of the UK or Europe, I think they're in Europe, it's like a uh, very cheap place to buy clothes. But um, I went in a H&M. That's yeah. like over a year ago now. And they had a Danzig t-shirt in there. And I was like, that is such a weird one. That's a really weird one compared to like, something like Slayer or Metallica. Did Motorhead. they like, order the wrong shirts or something from a <laughs> stockist? I mean, Danzig. Yeah, I know. It was, it was. I actually took a picture and put it on Facebook thinking, okay, yeah, I can understand the Slayer t-shirt because, you know, a lot of people know Slayer. You yeah. know, and yeah. so I put Danzig a bit more, you can obviously, you know, metal, if you're a metalhead, you know who they are, you know who he is, but... There's a lot of people who, who are into metal who, still, who don't know who Danzig is anymore because he's hardly yeah. massive. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's like a really unusual one, isn't it? It's like, fine, it kind if, of... It if, was a confusing one. You yeah. Think, you know, it was a good t-shirt, and I thought, I felt, you know, I'm not a fan of them, but... The thing yeah. is, if, if there had been some kind of resurgence to say the misfits over <laughs> here, you could understand. But, mm. yeah, that is a strange one. Yeah, and then the... What was it? I think it was H&M a couple of years ago got loads of slap because he was selling like t-shirts and like a uh, jacket for like £200 and they were like made up black metal bands. It was really funny and everyone was going absolutely berserk over it. Well, they played up at the time. Now there's about 17 bands with those names. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand the kind of anger there in a way because it's just like kind of I don't know, it's almost like taking the piss almost, you know? Um, I don't know, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's not as bad as, um, like, I think Justin Bieber's label released black metal shirts with his name on. That yeah. was, that was, that's kind of taking the smeg, because <laughs> don't mind pop bands doing it, but of all the people, Justin Bleeding Bieber, the yeah. ultimate antithesis of, uh, yeah. What black metal stands for, really. Didn't he, like, walk out on stage with, like, a... I don't know, it was, like, Metallica t-shirt or a Slayer t-shirt. He did, thing. along with... There was some female singer who come on stage with a Slayer shirt, and then the guitarist of Slayer walked out on stage in a... Like, the shirt just said, her name is bloody awful or something a bit stronger than that. I can't remember <laughs> what he said, but... It's probably something I can't say on this video. But, um, anyway... <laughs> But no, I can fair enough, you know, if they're a fan of it, you know, you can do whatever you want. But Justin Bieber goes on and on and about how metal really sucks, you know, and Does he to be honest with you, I've completely ignored the little scrote, so I didn't realise he was going on and on about it, so He did he put something up like right, not that I follow Justin Bieber. I've got to say, are we are we getting some insight here? <laughs> he does my head and I've got to be honest. But um, no, it was like, he, he put up something quite strong a few years, of, like saying something like how, you know, it's all just noise or whatever. And yeah, he's walking out with, I don't know, whatever t-shirt he's got on. It's like, wow, you know. Again, that might be a case of, though, is that his choice or was that the record label? I don't know. I, I've got, I can't really kind of, make no end of it why people would walk out with I don't like going back to the whole t-shirts and Primark or whatever store it is it's not metal you know it's you know whatever you know it sells and the they but so it's the weird when, thing to do with shops though because I mean America has something we've never had over here I don't think they've branched out over here and that's Hot Topic which is generally yeah. seen as the place for kind of kiddie goths and all that even though they from what I've seen they probably sell some decent kind of goth clothing but because it's hot topic uh, people take the piss out of people for it it's a bit yeah. like hmm you know that's the same as um, 
Um, that was a so weird noise we, just come through then. <laughs> that was my ringtone. Oh, um, we have a Soho over here, which is a chain store, and yeah, I think people take the mick out of people who go in there, you know. Blue Banana's another one. Uh, That's it, kind of, not to kind of stereotype, but very emo, kind of cutesy, graphic -y, weird things on t-shirts, you know, that sort of thing. Ah, so I don't have one in South End where I live, so I had no idea what you want about that. <laughs> it, yeah, it's just like a, I, I suppose the equivalent of like a hot topic. Hot, hop? I said hot topic. Uh, bloody you, hell. you got alcohol on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> hot topic is the word I was trying to find. Oh, now there's something interesting. Hmm. Phil Anselmo's back with a new band called Scowler, which after the whole white power thing last year is um ballsy of him and um, for those who don't know which might well include yourself um last year and of all the places to do it he done it at the um dime bag festival which was obviously to celebrate get loads of people together covering pantera songs and songs from bands that um dime bag Daryl light um and just have a massive sort of celebration of the music that Dimebag created and lights and all that and of Dimebag's life. However, Phil Anselmo, drunk or on something or whatever, come out on stage, finished the song, pretty much done a Nazi salute, there's video of it online, <laughs> and shouted White Power. Wow. Um, and literally the night after it, the day after it happened, the most vocal person who went, no, no, I'm not doing this, was um, Rob Flynn of Machine Head. He put up an 8-10 to 10 minute video on YouTube. Recommend you people go watch it after this podcast because if you haven't seen it, you will understand fully um, in better way than I can really describe it. But it got to the point where Rob Flynn went, if this is what metal is about, then consider me out. I'm not, I'm not metal anymore. And he proper rips into Phil Anselmo in that video, which is fair enough. I mean, this day and age, shouting that out, come on. Um, I mean, I know it's been a year, but it caused um, Down to be taken off all festival appearances that year because of it, along with a load of other things. It's weird that he's come back out and, well, he's getting support. It's just a bit weird. And even worse, that he's played Pantera with this new band, which... They never, they didn't exactly end on a happy note, let's say. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's um, interesting, interesting. But I've just found an amazing article here. Marduk. Marduk's show in Oakland got cancelled because people think they're Nazis. That's, that's not far off every black metal band ever, though, isn't it? <laughs> really, it's like everyone seems to think every black metal band is Nazi. I think Cradle of Filth got um, accused of it at some point. It's just like, no, no. Although, there is one band that have used, like, um, Nazi-style props on stage before. It might well be Marduk, which might be why, although... They do Marduk. have a song called, uh, an album called Panzer Division Marduk, which doesn't yeah. help. <laughs> exactly what I was felt, what I was thinking, Josh, yeah, because you've got that kind of affiliation with kind of World War Two kind of, you know, stuff. But then you, you think, like, oh, it's a bit of a weird one because a lot of bands, there is a lot of bands out there who kind of do a lot about, like, in particular World War Two, And it's, there's all, there's kind of always there's like a fine line between you know, singing about it or screaming about it, whatever, you know, whatever, and um, kind of going over that line and praising Nazis, or I don't know, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was the, I think it's called the Oi movement in punk, which isn't yeah. the whole movement, but when it started it was um, very sort of skinhead, racist, I can't yeah, really say yeah, the last yeah. word I want to say there. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, it did become a bit of a movement, and that does still exist, unfortunately, which is a bit, um, probably why we kind of look down a bit as metalers sometimes. And there are some black metalers who are still into all that. I think um, Varg is, isn't he? Well, <laughs> funny enough, I was actually just about to bring up, like, Burzum, because, again, it's, it's 
a confusion with a lot of things because if you think with um, like Burzum's later work, it's concentrating on like Norse mythology and the you know sagas, whatever he's going on about in his albums. Which you know, I really do like some of his amb- like ambient sort of stuff. I, but, I should probably listen to it because I mean, I yeah. even though I like his more up to date stuff, I actually quite liked what was termed at the moment uh, Mortis's dungeon music. I actually <laughs> quite yeah, liked that to chill out to, so... It, I like Burzum's kind of later albums, believe it or not, but going back to what I'm saying, it's, you know, people get very confused because the Nazis actually took a lot of symbols from obviously various kind of forms of spirituality. And yeah, religion. one of them was, um, well, the... The uh, swastika. Yeah, it was Jewish, if I remember rightly. Is that no, Jewish? It Hindu. Hindu, oh. I thought it was Jewish yeah. for some reason. But, um, Buddhism. Hindu Buddhism. Buddhism. For uh, light... Oh, I can't remember it. But, no, like, you think of, um, like, the runes, for example, in, like, the Norse sort of stuff, ancient Norse. You know, it's... People... It's like you get these uh, these groups of, you know, very racist... Um, I forgot there's a particular group, like, motorbike sort of group... Like that 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 doesn't help. Motorbikes. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But they're like white supremacists, but they use the symbols, so people get very confused with that sort of thing. Oh, I know who you're on about, but they they aren't that anymore. I think that's something during the sixties. I'm not going to say the name of the group, but because obviously we don't know for certain who they are. Um, but is it the same group who had issues with um, Iggy Pop back in the seventies? So, but there's quite been a few though. There has been quite a few. There is, but just yeah. because I know yeah. I know bikers are better. I want to say this as well, just to clear us both. We're not saying all bikers are racist no. or Nazis and all that, obviously. But no. there was a part of that um, to some groups in the seventies, eighties, possibly now, unfortunately. Yeah, now as well, definitely. Oh, and metal, metal is. I mean, I've been at gigs, and something I kind of hate is when people describe things as like. If they don't like it, if they go, oh, it's gay. Oh, I hate that. And it's just like, what? So, just because you don't like it, you think they're homosexual. One, what's wrong with being gay anyway? And two, what? <laughs> you know? Just like, yeah, yeah. just say, it's not for me. I mean, I've said some terrible things, not like that, but I've said some really rather strong things about certain bands funnily enough not Metallica just other bands that I can't stand <laughs> generally emo ones back in the day um, but I never described something as gay same as kind of going completely on a tangent here um, kind of get on my little soapbox um, I don't quite like using the term straight because the term bent is very very um, aggressive I feel yeah yeah I mean to me, if, you, if you're talking about someone's sexuality, which I'm assuming you're kind of going on about now... I did say it was a tangent, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's um, a person at the end of the day, you know. Is it any of your business what who they're into, what they're into? You know, if they want to tell you, you know, fair enough. But why judge somebody, why call them a name? Call them their name, you know. Well, if, they want to say, if they want to say, you know, I, um, I'm attracted to men, women, whatever, both non whatever you want to be but you know it's why label somebody you know well, with the uh gay thing the the best way i can do it is to quote i can't remember his name he's i think he's an australian comedian he's either from australia or new zealand and the best thing he's ever said on stage that is absolutely awesome was if you are man enough to take another man's um penis that hard up your ass you're more of a man than me <laughs> I can't remember what comedian that was now, but he is, and that's coming from an Australian, and Australians are generally quite well known for, they're accepting, but they're very, very um, blatant, as it were, blunt, (laughs) so, you know, um, so yeah, anyway, we're going to go from talking to Nazis to talking about the US. (laughs) Is there there much of a difference these days? Um, No offence to American listeners, but Donald Trump. Um... (laughs) <laughs> what is here is a U.S. Department of Defense command post <laughs> yes. has yes, a new really... list of banned music that the uh, people are not allowed to play there. They have Where banned... Popcorn. 
Oh. Yeah, corn. Uh, can't agree with that. Nickelback, which according to the memorandum, they can't spell, but to be honest with you, I kind of agree with the, not be, letting that play. Slipknot. The weirdest one for me, though, Smash Mouth. Yeah, I mean... I could tell you two songs by Smash Mouth and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> if it was just them two songs played repeatedly, fair enough, but... Yeah, yeah, but I think, you know, I've heard, like, yeah, one or two tunes, and I thought they were kind of one of those bands that disappeared a they very did, long they, time ago. I think they're still going, but they did two songs worth listening to, All Star, and I can't remember the other one, what the other one was called now. That's um, how much it's stuck in my head. <laughs> and then the last one, they've banned Creed. We're in 2017. I don't care whether you're a fan or not, who is still listening to Creed? What Especially if you're listening to Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> Creed are like... Aren't they like a Christian band as well? Uh, like lyrically, kind of... they, were, they were a Christian grunge band. And they did come back, have come back twice now to very little fanfare. However, if you want a fun game, people, watch the video where there's where it's flooding. I think it's called My Sacrifice. And count yeah. the amount of times the man, the lead singer, clutches his fists and pulls both his arms down <laughs> together in front of him. I counted it's sixteen. Shot. I counted sixteen. It's um. Shot every time you see it. I don't want to give people liver damage. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like counting the amount of swear words in a King Eight Ten song or um, in a Slipknot song. You know, like it'd be every time he says the F word in surfacing. You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> Drink every time you hear a corn song about childhood. Um, anyway. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. what, why ban this music? It's just music. It's, you know, I mean... Surely it would have, like, banned something, like, more annoying, like, Justin Bieber. Well, yeah, but I don't know. It's It's a strange, strange thing. I mean, yeah... Uh, you're supposed to be land of the free, America. What's going on? So <laughs> I've no idea, but they, they, they like to ban things. America, no offence, Americans. Um, Do you want to say that a bit more convincingly? <laughs> got plenty of friends in America, of course, but bloody hell, you know. How many things, you, you know, it's like a adamant on banning uh, everything. Sorry. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> I've got to edit that now, you know that. <laughs> <sighs> you tell someone no swear, they still go and swear. Anyway. <laughs> Was this because you were about to stand on your chair as opposed to getting on your soapbox? <laughs> yeah. Let's beep it. Uh, anyway, yes, you were... Um, I've got to find the sound file for that, anyway. Anyway, going completely off track, you were saying there. I forgot what I was on about. Well, no, I was on about. Americans, know, yeah. Think of Donald Trump at the moment, wants <laughs> to ban everything. You know, people can't come into the country because you're from a, you know, a Muslim state or whatever. And it's like, ban everything, build a massive wall. You know, it's like, it's really mental what's going on at the moment. You know. Yeah. The world? It's mental. I mean, the whole wall thing um, and some of the other policies that Trump and the right wing people have brought in, well, not people, uh, politicians, to us it looks mental. To them, they think they're doing a service to their country and being very patriotic. I'm not going to say where I lie on this. Okay, I am. I think you're all bleeding stupid. But <laughs> um, mainly, yeah. partially because it does come off as just a teensy bit racist. And two, because most of your money comes from dealing, like, doing deals with other countries. You're biting off the hand that feeds you. Um, it'd be like us turning around again, oh, we can't let, we're not letting in any more Polish people, black people, um, Irish, German, or whatever. We will only have people with pure blood English. You know? Really, um, I am here. Don't worry, I'm not run off. I'm surprised. I've kind of <laughs> went off on one there. <laughs> no, I've, uh, I've got not. That I've got very strong views on these sort of things. Not, not like. Um, I, I just won't go into the kind of views I have with the uh, people's kind of 
ideas of uh, well, it's being misinformed and kind of making assumptions about people. And it is other- hard, really, with the whole um, like Donald Trump thing. It's working out how many of the things that have gone ahead were actually his idea or that he's been spoken into to sign off on. Yeah, it's... I he's, can understand that why people want to do it to a point. I can understand. Yeah, he's he's the figurehead and therefore he's got to be the one who takes all the flack. And yeah. Well, no real well, offence to the man, but he does have an incredibly punchable face. So... <laughs> But it's like banning people from, um, you know, the Arab states, Arab countries, whatever, the Muslim countries. Yeah, well... Uh, I can understand why they want to do it, but it does not solve a problem they have. They're obviously trying to eradicate all other terrorism, but at the end of the day, it's going to happen anyway, you know. Yeah, you can eradicate terrorism in one place, but... Even if you eradicate it there, it will rise up in somewhere else to go against well, you. You've got probably, you know... I mean, we've been putting up with it for years. There's people living in, like, America who are Muslim, you know? Do you really think those people... I'm not, oh, God, no, I'm not saying, you know, they're terrorists. Goodness, no, you know. But, you know, it only takes one bad one bad seed to kind of ruin the bunch, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, you know, you, you, you're going to get it. You're just going to get it anywhere, and people... And get into the country, speak and whatever. Um, I'm um, anyway. I'm going to stop with that because, I, like I said, I've got some very yeah, strong. Yeah, we, we should to... probably stop talking yeah. about politics. Try and keep this back to uh, something a little bit light-hearted. But talking about ridiculous things, you thought they had literally marketed everything. Oh no, Kiss, or I should probably say more Gene Simmons, has now found something else to merchandise. Yes, and my God, I wish this was a joke. Kiss are now selling official air guitar strings. Yeah, aren't they like ridiculously expensive as well? Probably just because I have the Kiss logo on them, but air guitar yeah. strings. It's an empty bag. I mean, I, do you know what? I am not sure whether Gene Simmons is the greatest troll in the world or if he's one of the best businessmen ever, you know, it's just, the thing is, people will buy these things, that's the worst part, yeah, and I, I, why, how, <laughs> and it seems to only be Kiss who could get away with that, if any other band got away with it, they would be slammed so hard, but Kiss, it's just, oh my god, air guitar strings. This reminds me of that time where somebody sold an air guitar on eBay, it went for thousands. Yeah, yeah, I think that's something like, like it was owned by Jimi Hendrix or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like people really will buy anything. Yeah, you know? it's um, I've, honestly, I've words escape me really because yeah, um, you can, yeah, I can get like the whole you know you want to put a name behind selling something, but something like something that something has to exist first for you to sell it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> basically. <Usually> helps. <laughs> oh dear lord! Uh, well, that's well, just yeah. reminded me. So I've just seen something about Mayhem. I've realised I've still not listened to their last album. Um, don't even own it yet, which is really, really bad. So. <laughs> oh, you know what? It wasn't a bad album. No, nah, was it as good as um? Ah, all die Kyo. That's the album. I, you know what, people might think of it, you know, because there's there's been a lot of kind of mixed reviews, obviously it's been out for like over a year now. Yeah, that's what I mean, that's why I'm surprised I've still not bought it or listened to it yet, so. I like it personally, I think it's one of the better albums they have done, because there's some. Is it one of those that's got to be divisive, like, um, I've forgotten the name of it now, that's good, isn't it? Um, I know which one you mean. Grand, De- Grand Declaration of War. Yeah. See. Where it was uh, half a good album and then they'd done something. I don't know what that was, that last half of that album, but it wasn't good. <laughs> People's problem with the newest album is it's very clean, you know. What, a bit it's, overproduced sounding or? Yeah, it's very clean, it's very, it's well produced. That's what people's problem, yeah, <sighs> people 
problems are with it. Which I can kind of understand because of how dirty a lot of yeah, Mayhem albums were. But, but then again, I'm thinking back to like Chimera and um, oh, there's some tra- album that's only five tracks long, six tracks long. It's absolutely awesome. Um, ah. Christ, it was like a really good album with the other vocalist. Um, ah, I'm drawing a blank. I'm going to have to Amazon it. But um, I've also forgotten the point of what I was speaking about. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> you <laughs> lost me now. But, um, the Chimera album and this other album that I'm thinking of, that I'm still trying to find the name of, um, they basically were pretty cleanly produced. No one, no one moaned about it. <laughs> so it's a bit weird that now people are moaning about it because they've come out with this album. Yeah, I mean, I remember when it came come out, people were moaning about it. Yeah. I, mean, it. I think it's been out for like two years now, isn't it? Possibly. Probably. Yeah. But no, um, I, I liked it. I, and it did have that kind of, uh, you know, despite it being quite well produced, very cleanly produced, how you want to call it. Yeah. It, um, it had that kind of grittiness to it still. It's hard to explain, but you'd have to listen to it to kind of... If you listen to... Um, I love Sai War on it, you see. I love that tune. I found it, the album I'm thinking of. Wolf Slayer Abyss. That's the one, <laughs> yeah. But no, if you have a... Listen to Sai War, and it's very clean, very nice, but then you've got, like, a very uh, grittiness... You've got grittiness to it. Yeah. And you've, got, you've still got the vocals, and they're really... You know, the vocals are still really good. You know? Um, it's still, I can never remember his name for the life of me. Um, Attila, isn't it? Attila, yeah. Ah, good, good. Although he's doing a few things at the moment. He's doing that. He released an album um, where he's in the band with Joey Jordison, um, which you may have missed, because a lot of people, I think, did. And they didn't even know it come out. It was an extreme metal band called Sinsanium. Oh, okay. Which I've got to um, get around to actually listening and doing the review of. But uh, it came out late last year, and it is... Let's just have a look here, because I've got it literally by the side of me. The album's called Echo of the Tortured. Mm-hmm. And the lineup is... Strangely enough, it's got Sean, Sean Zatorski, whose name I vaguely remember, uh, vaguely recognised, Attila mm-hmm. Sihar, mm-hmm. and Frederick Leclerc, who was in... Dragon Force, and I think he's now in Arch Enemy as well. Um, and some other people I don't recognise apart from Jay Jordison on drums. And it's a bit... Yeah. It's a yeah. um, weird mix of people, isn't it? It's not just that. It's like Attila Sihar doing pretty much death metal, which I don't think he's ever done before. He's, uh, he's done a few kind of... Um, I De- mean, he's done like a few kind of death metal esque sort of stuff, though, hasn't he? Mm, I mean, the list of bands he's kind of been in. There's quite a lot of bands he's kind of been associated and, um, you know, kind of been in, you know? Well, the last band or album I heard with Attila on was. Um, oh, what's the name of it? It wasn't Volcano. It might have been called Volcano. Um, it was the last album by Sunno, bracket, bracket, bracket. Yeah, we did say Sunno, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was a really, really good album. He really suited that drone sound. Like, that yeah, was yeah. spot on. Um, but I haven't listened to that album in a while, actually. I should really get around to that. But yes, it's um, interesting. The thing is, I've also, and um, this is another review that's going to go up at some point over the next couple of weeks, finally got around to listening to the newest Dark Throne album. Okay. Um, it's an album of two halves, basically. Uh, they're returning to their black metal roots, but you get the feeling that even though it's only two people, they don't feel a hundred percent confident in going back that way at the moment. Because there's still a few of that blackened sort of rock and roll that they were doing before. Yeah. So worth listening to, worth buying because it is a pretty damn good album, but. Not their best. However, when they do hit some of the black metal songs, it's it's as good as Transylvanian Hunger. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Sorry, I've just, the minute Apple buy something, I've just discovered. What's that? I never knew this. Now, this is quite a weird one. So I'm just kind of... Are you Wikipedia? And, well, Wikipedia teller. Uh, just having a general kind of looking at other bands he was in. He was in an EBM band. What one? Plasma Pool. I knew he'd been in an EBM band, but I never heard them. Yeah, I've heard of them. This is what we them. Saying that, um, what's his name? Uh, the other vocalist who's done Mayhem. I could never remember his name either. Um, Ma- the, 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 he's done. He doesn't some sort of. I think it's an EBM or industrial type band with um, the ex vocalist of Gullhammer, who is now his wife. Oh, um, Maniac. Yeah, Maniac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think they're called Ghost Flower or something, if my memory serves correct. Yeah, I've never... Um... I've, I, they, again, I sort of looked at it and went, oh, I should check them out. And then yeah. YouTube happens. So... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I did that. Um, I think it was like, oh, I know about the band. I should listen to them and never did. Right, let's let's be... Um, how can I put this? Let's be slightly judgy now um, on our own thing. Up here, you're probably on the same site as me now. I've got Trevor from Black Dahlia Murder and his 19 picks of extreme metal. Now, okay. I've seen a few things with Trevor before. I can't remember if I've. I may have spoken to Trevor, I might have actually interviewed him at some point. I really can't remember, which is quite bad, but um, it's mainly because I had so many um, like interviews I've done over the years. Um. But, he does tend to like the underground death metal, so black and it's death metal. So how many of these will have heard of is another thing. <laughs> okay, go for it. Okay, I'll put it in a moment. Um, hang on. Uh, uh, while, we're to, while I'm just typing this out, because I'm looking for something. Also, stupidly, that's what else I've got to do. I have got to start writing down the topics we've spoken about to put as the... Uh, Tags, um, mayhem, Lady Gaga, uh, da da da, Taka, uh, da, 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 Kitty, yeah, right, okay, yes, uh, oh, like, so this this makes for riveting listening, doesn't it, people? <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so while I'm doing that, what? music have you been listening to this this week or any tv programs you've been watching this week um i've just i've not really listened to anything particularly new uh that is something i feel will be a continuing uh <laughs> phrase throughout <laughs> these uh, podcasts <laughs> so, you know funny enough it's, be, it's because it's been one of those really crazy sort of weeks and yeah. now i've got time to actually chill Oh, I say chill. I never can chill. I can actually probably listen to something new-ish or whatever. Um, uh, TV-wise, I binge-watched this morning a program called Somebody Knows My Name. Heard uh, of, but can't remember much about it. It's a, it's a, like a six-part series series thing on at Fox. If I say that, it is strange that you've been binge-watching this week, because um, this week... I know I'm late on this. I actually binge watched and I'm now fully up to date on Sherlock. <laughs> never watched it, you know. Never did watch that. Watch it, honestly. Get hold yeah. of it and watch it. It is so, so good. Just watch one a night because they're all what, an hour and a half long. But they've done it really well. And it's actually written by um, two of the people who've done League of Gentlemen. So yeah. it is uh, really, really good. Um, well worth watching. Uh, this is hilarious. You'll love this. So, I dare say, I share a certain music app with my mother. I won't right. say what it is. And um, she obviously saves albums onto the same sort of, you know, thing as me. So, flicking through, it's like, you know, Enslaved album, it's, it's sunny, you know. Oh, you forget things. hitting your uh, MP3 player already, are you? <laughs> well, then, I come across there's one album and it's brilliant. It's Terry Wogan's Celebration of Artists. The hell? <laughs> so, yeah. And then next to that, again, my mother, 
Where do reception party music? What, what? is that? I don't know. Nor, nor <laughs> do... Do you know I'm scared to know? I'm actually scared to know. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, as I was saying, yes, the uh, the albums from Trevor. I always don't, I never know how to actually pronounce his last name. So, Trev, if you listen to this for any reason, I apologise if I've pronounced your last name wrong. Uh, Trevor Sternad of Black Dahlia Murder. His 19 picks are a band I've never heard of. That's a good start. Abnormal, inhumane, and consuming the infi- infinity. Can't say I, I know him. I know the name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, never heard of them. Uh, beheaded. Beast incarnate. Nope. I'm not doing well here. Uh, <laughs> Again, I know the name, but. Carnal. Never heard of them. Okay, you know what? We might have to avoid. Uh, I'm looking through. I don't know any of these. Oh, I know cynic. <laughs> Um, okay, this this is a topic that's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> I should have looked at this before starting it, really. Um, yeah. And there's one band there that I couldn't say the name of anyway. <laughs> moving swiftly on. Yes, moving very swiftly on. Um, as we are on a bit of a sort of list here, I mean, what would you call, if you can think of it, the five... Essential black metal albums. Oh, you have to go with the classics, aren't you? I don't know. You might have a different opinion because they've got to be what you believe is essential. It might not be what the world in general. Because there will some, there would be some people out there who may not think Emperor is essential anymore. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to say what essential is, but I suppose that my personal opinion would be, yeah, Emperor, I'd say, Night Side Eclipse. Right. Um, Mayhem, D. Mysterious, Don Satanus. Yeah. yeah. Did you always forget the name of one of the best albums ever made? <laughs> well, I, think, I always say just D. Mysterious. So uh, that's true, I think everyone does. Um, ooh. Burzum. Now, I'm not quite sure what album to actually say. The one with war on it. <laughs> yeah. um, if people, I'll, I'll, while you think here, I'll better explain why I'm giggling there. Um, for those who haven't heard it, go and listen to the song War by Burzum. Because he does literally... The way he introduces the song is amazing. Because he literally just goes, huh, this is called... Huh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that... I'm not even joking. That is literally how he says it. So, um, yes. I um, Burzum, my favourite album, kind of early Burzum, black metal, with a bit of ambient in it, is a Philosopher. Is it Philosopher? Yeah, pronounce it pronounced that Philosopher. Love that album. Other black metal bands. Hmm. That's three you've had there, isn't it? Yeah. I say, um, Dark Throne. Personally, I would go with... Ooh. I'm really hoping this isn't just picking up me typing. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's really hard to say which um, Dark Throne album because... What, of the classic three? It's either going to be Transylvania Hunger or Blade in the Northern Sky. Possibly Northern Sky kind of tips the scale a little bit. Right, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll just say... Blazing Northern Sky. Right. One more. One more album. Hmm. Also, there's a band, I'm surprised you haven't said it. They're not a classic band, but I know you are currently probably over-listening to them still. Immortal? Uh, no, no, it weren't Immortal I was thinking of, actually. Who were you thinking of? I was thinking Carrack. Carrack Kangren? Yeah. Um, Carrick Hangren that are like one of those sort of, they're kind of black black and death metal, they're not pure black metal, that's me being really picky. That, that's her, that's the full on pure BM elitist side coming out there. <laughs> Go from the kind of pure black metal point of view. Mm. I don't know, Satyricon, 
it would be um oh goodness what's that album called now no it's diavina diavelina or the no dark medieval times oh right okay the first okay. album love that album was it the first the first one the 94 93 oh fair enough right yeah. mine and I know you're going to sneer at one of them because you'll say, oh, that's not pure black metal. <laughs> I could go. I could probably do a top ten, but I'll just leave it at that. We, we might do the top ten another time because it depends. Yeah. Um, I have, like, just to let people know, did try to get some more people involved this week. Um, might try and get one or two to involve, involved as we go along, but a lot of people are at work when we're doing this, so it's a bit difficult. Um, anyway... My top five black, well, what I would call my essential black metal albums. Um, Emperor, Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. Yeah. Um, I will go with Transylvanian Hunger for Dark Throne. And yeah, part of that cool. is because if I am ever sort of walking home at night, or, or it's like first thing in the morning, it's like still dark, there's nothing that beats hearing that riff while walking along. Oh, yeah, it's it's... You know, it was really hard to choose both. Yeah, I mean, both, both. funnily yeah. enough, the, like, I know it's the three classic albums, but they're of the three classic albums, I never got on with Under a Funeral Moon that much. Yeah, same here. I mean, brilliant album, but... It, it was, was like the songs were a bit too long to really... Uh, too short, sorry, to really get the same feeling yeah. across. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. And your other three? Uh, my other three. Now here's the contentious one. Hmm. Because on. I, they're returning to black metal now, but they had some time in the wilderness. It had to be said. Even I'll admit that. We'll call them the um, the two thousands kind of awful period. Cradle of Filth. And I've got to go. Cruelty and the Beast. Hmm, okay. Um. No, I, I think anything kind of pre-Midian. I'll, I'll... See, I like I love Midian a lot, but that was yeah. kind of the beginning of the downfall, as it were. Yeah. When they, when even they started to admit we're not black metal anymore, we are just yeah. metal. Whereas now, with Ham of the Witches, they have started going back to black metal, and yeah. it is glorious. Anyway, um, and now Nathrak. I, I would have judged you, but yeah, go yeah. on. Um, and now Nafrak, Hell is Empty and All the Devils Are Here. Ooh, you know, a really funny thing with an Nafrak. You've got to be in the right um, mood. You've got to be in an no. absolute hate humanity mood. <laughs> First of all, never, always try to spell it right because it can really come out wrong. Um, <laughs> yes, secondly, it's a now, two A's after the N. <laughs> and secondly, you know, it's one of those really weird things that it's going to sound really weird. I never associate them with black metal. I don't know why. Nor do I, considering they are, like... Yeah, they are black metal. For long, have... hatred, mankind hating, continuing the tradition of um, Marduk and Natfrost and... Um, uh... Not Marduk, sorry. Uh, was it Marduk? No. Um, who done more with Fascination of Death? Um, not Marduk. Oh, no, it weren't Marduk at all, was it? They done... Yeah, uh, da, 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 da. yeah. Them anyway. Whoever yeah. Nat Frost used to sing for, um, Carpathian Forest. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they've just got that. I, I can't stand why they are probably heavier than ninety percent of other black metal bands. They are. They're a brilliant band because they are so goddamn abrasive. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, they are interesting story. Um, for people who don't know. Uh, Devin Townsend, when he was doing, um, uh, da, 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 when they were doing, when he was still doing Strapping Young Lad, and he broke it up, and people all kept asking him, will Strapping Young Lad ever, a lad ever come back? He actually, in, in an interview, said, I can't do music that heavy anymore, and I definitely, I mean, just listen to her now, Nafrak, I can't beat that heaviness. Those guys are awesome. They got a yeah. really endorsement from Devin Townsend for being so heavy that he couldn't beat them even with strapping young lad. Yeah. Now that's that's mind blowing considering obviously the album City exists. So <laughs> yeah. and my fifth black metal choice. Yes. Um Doubt of Mendez by Aka Ooh. 
absolutely up. Do you know what? Couldn't name you many of the other songs off that album, so I've not listened to it for ages, but Skin for Dancing In, my God, that's, that is like progressive black metal perfection to me, that song. Uh, the entire album, I mean, that first song, um, Metal uh, Blood and because they're lovely people. <laughs> you know what? The jolly good chap, you know. <laughs> they, well, so, they, they do actually come across like that in interviews, seem very nice, so. Yeah. Well, I saw them, I finally saw them last year at Bloodstock, and they were, you know, absolutely fantastic stage presence and everything, you know, proper, you know, you, you know, you could probably bump into them in the middle of town and have a drink with them, you know, that kind of, you know. Yeah, thing. yeah, I imagine you can, say with, um, I think you can with Danny Filth, uh, depending, depending anything. on when you meet him. I've not seen anything. <laughs> yeah, best not. <laughs> because, uh. I have friends who know him, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it, it could alter it, with a lot of people. It depends on if you get them at the right time, I think. So, but no, yeah. Akakaka, um which is <coughs> quite a difficult name to say um, without. It's actually Akakok. Is you it? Know, after a very long time of me saying See, Akakok. I, I was calling him Akaku yeah. for a while. Yeah. But, yeah, their name, I can't remember what they're named after now. It's a monkey. It's named after a monkey out of a book that I cannot quite remember. I thought that was a Nal Nafrak. A Nal Nafrak and, um, I don't know, I can't think whether, what their names are. And Nal Nafrak, they, it was a rumour for years that their name came from, um, the name of a mountain in Lord of the Rings, and they have now stated it emphatically they are not named after a mountain in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, it, yeah. it's like a monomorph and named after um, a mountain. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. Talking of a monomorph, um, that's my five sort of essential black metal yeah. there. Um, have you heard their newest album yet, Jorgensmunder? No, I haven't. Apologies to everyone who speaks that language, because I've probably cocked up the uh, <laughs> pronunciation of that. Um, uh, I've Because I'm catching up on albums, I only get to listen to these albums once, because I want to try and get back on top of things. Um, on a first listen, mm, they're above average, but not their best, I would I've say. I've heard some pops, but... Yeah, it's... I think my problem is with a monomath, because I listened to them for so like listened to with Odin I outside so much when it came out because my first Modern Math album um, yeah. I kind of started to get bored with them constantly doing mid paced songs and that's what yeah. they're still doing <laughs> I do don't get me wrong I do like the occasional listen of the Modern Math but I've never been a huge fan of them believe it or not which is quite shocking if you actually kind of know what you know Music aside, I, I, you know, stuff I do. She kind of... loves a good beard. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Viking with a beard, contact Sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, people are usually quite shocked to hear. Cause what it is, now this is going to sound really picky. Oh, uh, well, uh, to be honest with you, you've some of the things you said in the last podcast sounded quite picky, but so did I, so, you know. I love... I love me folk metal and stuff like that, but I'm not that big into Viking metal. Um, Apart from, like, I love Bathory, I see, love this Viking metal sort of Viking stuff. Viking metal is weird, because it gets yeah. used to describe about three different types of band now. Yeah, yeah. It's you've like got your, of, yeah, you've the, got your black yeah. metal, epic black metal bands who are described as Viking metal. You've got your folk metal bands who are described as Viking metal. And you've got your bands like Monomath who are described as Viking metal. So, it's a bit difficult, really. Yeah, I find it... I, not saying a modern Marvel one, because I do enjoy it once in a while, but I find them quite boring. They... I don't know. They seem to have... You know, they've found a formula that works for me. My God, it works for them. But they need to vary up their pace a bit. <laughs> I mean, you, you're never going to really run out of things to... Like lyrically sing about. Well, no, but I mean. I'm, oh, you will eventually, because you've got like, 200 albums, but you know. 
I don't I think, think um... actually I'll say I don't think any band's got that close there's probably a grindcore band that has <laughs> Although, yeah two second long songs yeah I can imagine that yeah that'd be um, Agrophobic Nosebleed who had I have the album with it with this as well it's like literally 200 songs on a double disc album and every song is five their their version of Epic is five seconds <laughs> So, yeah, but I also own an anal <clears throat> so album. AC, AC, AC yeah. album, yeah, which I had to buy because it was the one with Hitler who was a sensitive man. Oh, you know what? Once in a while, that song gets stuck in my head, and it's just the uh, the, the bit about the cure, and it's just like, oh. <laughs> oh, what, you used to listen to the cure, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... Never walk around singing that. It's not a good well, thing. Well, no, no, Look in your no. Head. Oh dear. Yes, it does. It does indeed. Now everyone's YouTubing that song. Um, that song's alright. Actually, the worst thing is to say that this. If you've never heard AC before, obviously that's not their real name, but I can't say the last word. Um, they're incredibly <laughs> offensive. Song titles alone are incredibly offensive. So, um, <laughs> be warned. If you're under 18, do not listen to them. <laughs> well, it, it was that whole thing of they tried to ban the name to just AC, wasn't it? Like, I don't know, whoever it was tried to ban the name. Yeah. So they, they called themselves AC, but they kind of did the A and the C in a very kind of practical Suggestive way. way yeah. 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 The, so, the, very suggestive, yeah. The album I've got is it's thing is they did actually make good grindcore. That's the worst part. Yeah. So although talking of grindcore, um going back to me catching up on albums, I listened to an American band this week, um an album that was in a lot of uh, top twenty albums of the year. A band called Nails. Okay. Uh the album's called um Oh You Will Never Be One of Us. And it is 22 minutes of absolute grindcore perfection. It is so good. And yeah. I cannot actually recommend that album enough. I think I said said as much in my review as well. It's on the site. Feel free to go check it out, people. Um, <laughs> I feel so bad doing that. Um, but, yeah. Um, if you like your grindcore nails, you will never be one of us. Literally, just set aside 25 minutes of your day. That's all you need, and <laughs> it will set you up for life. That is such a good album. Um, and another band I listened to today. Now, this is going to sound absolutely goddamn awful when I describe them. Um, probably to you, more so. Have you heard of Cavelt Attack? No. I think they're a fairly newer band. Um, mm -hmm. Their new album called Natsford. The review's coming over the next couple of weeks, people. Um... How can I describe them? Think of 70s rock with black metal vocals, but also portions of black metal blasting. Okay. Hmm. It's hard to describe, but you would have to listen to them, because I got caught off guard. I listened to the, like, started listening to the album, first song, full on raging black metal, and then about three quarters of the way through, suddenly this sort of 70s funky riff suddenly come in. And it's like when you first listen to Fin Troll, you're sitting there thinking, yeah. this shouldn't work as well as it does. Yeah. Yeah, that's Cavelt Attack. They, yeah. that, that shouldn't work. But it it does so well, and I can't explain why. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, well worth checking that out, along with uh, the new King 810 album, which is gloriously awesome. Absolutely amazing. But if you're know, somebody who's listened to the first album of King 810... Don't expect the same thing. This is not the same sort of angry, slipknot styled album. So, yeah, anyway. Sorry, I sort of went off with one again then. Um, Go for it. Yeah, uh, what's talking about? Da, 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 da. Let's have a look what else is here. Da, da, da. No, it's still Trevor. Da, da, da. Oh, yes. Um, Ghost. A recording a darker new album this summer. Yeah, yeah. And apparently have a completely new lineup. That That's nothing new, though, is it? They, they seem to just kind of... 
No, they usually usually just replace the vocalist, supposedly. Yeah, there's always somebody new in the band, isn't there? You know. Well, I say supposedly because it they it's amazing how many like over how over the last three albums they found three different people who sound like the same vocalist. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and looks the same as well with the makeup on. So <laughs> now yeah. I it took me a while. Weird ones, aren't they? Yeah. I can never really kind of make a proper judgment on Ghost. I it took me a while, but I like them now. Not as much as um, DJ JD does, but <laughs> I do rather like them. DJ JD will be joining us on a future podcast, so uh, keep an ear out for that. But um, somebody summed it up brilliant, brilliantly for me once. Uh, what was it? Ghost kind of sound like a darker version of Cliff Richard. Um, but it, it kind of. Makes sense in a weird way. Cliff Richard, if he was brought up on a diet of Black Sabbath. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah that's actually... Right. That's quite apt, and yet worryingly would put people off. That's the worrying thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I was, I was, <laughs> yeah. Um, all disturbed, begin to... Uh, sorry, hope to begin writing a new album this year, which... I've had a love-hate relationship with Disturbed. Um, I loved them when they first come out, then found their next few albums to be really, really dull. Um, and then I've been getting into them over the last few years again. And their last album, their newest album, uh, The Vengeful One, yeah, it's Vengeful One, no, that was a single, sorry, Immortalised, um, was actually really good. Um, so, be interesting to see where they go on the next album. Uh, now, as I'm talking about one of the bands that come out of the whole new metal era, what are your thoughts on new metal at the time and now? New metal. Yeah. Like, how were you towards it when it first started, and how are you towards it now? Um, when it comes to like new metal, like I think naturally you kind of. I, had, I was in that sort of age where I got into it when it was kind of the prime new metal era. You know, like when Hyper Theory came out with like Link Park and I really kind of got into that, got into it then. And then obviously your music kind of, it's a very good kind of gateway to metal. Yeah. If people kind of want to get into metal, like gateway bands, you know. And then, you know, you move on to whatever. But like now, I'll only listen to like new metal if it's um, like a nostalgia kind of thing. Again, like I was on about last uh, podcast, like I've got the odd thing on my phone, like thinking, oh, I've not listened to that in years. It makes me laugh now, you know. What what were the, uh, if you even remember yourself, your new metal met bands of choice back in the day? Oh, I'll, you know, it's all a kind of, generic ones like I love Linkin Park this is when I was like 13 yeah but Linkin Park when you were 13 that would have been when they yeah. only had the one album yeah the, the, literally the Which Hyper Theory came out and it was actually like, still stands up today it was everything after that that went a bit yeah <laughs> I found like the second album where it's like let's re-release the first album but we'll change the uh, lyrics <laughs> um, like Horn things like that um Almost like one of those kind of really big bands I was into at that age. Um, who else now? So there's a fair few like forgotten new metal bands, um, and ones that should have been bigger that didn't. I mean, they're getting big now, but obviously Skin Dread come out during that era. Yeah, yeah. You kind of uh, it's almost like you forget about. You remember the uh, the big bands, you know. I, th- I think it was that point where I, when I was getting into metal. I mean, there's so I um, remember the the ones that were on like Kerrang or something, you know. So you talk about forgotten bands. I mean, do you remember Dry Kill Logic? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> there's one tune even now Nightmare. I really love, and no, um, oh god, what's the uh, the two I songs I primarily remember by Dry Kill Logic were Nightmare and mm. a song called Rot, where they literally completely took the smeg out of um, Spice Girls' Wannabe at the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I couldn't name you any other Dry Kill Logic songs. And I own the album. So... <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I can't remember the tune to it, but it had like a really weird kind of melodic bit in the middle. As we talk about new metal, that doesn't help. To be honest <laughs> with you. Um, yeah, see, I for can't... me, I, like you, new metal was my gateway into metal, as it were. And yeah. I still love it today, but I love new metal that wasn't just rapped vocals, I think. It was the new metal that was doing something different that I loved. Um, yeah. I did like some of the rapping stuff, don't get me wrong. I mean, I will be a staunch defender of the very first Limp Bizkit album for the um, rest of my life. Because the first Limp Bizkit album, and to an extent the second, were good. Mm. Um, but more so the first, because it was a unique sound and um, Fred Durst hadn't found an as much of an ego yet um, <laughs> but I was more about bands like Deftones and One Minute Silence and Love Death. even now I do enjoy a bit of Deftones you know goodness me <laughs> that, all going that, on here. that was the squink alarm for talking about Deftones apparently <laughs> yeah um, yeah, um oh, Taproot I used to love them as well I think they're still going are they still going? I do Mushroom believe Mushroom Head Love Band. They're still going. Yeah. It's see, man empty. You don't realise they're still going. See, Mushroom Head, I could never fully get into. I don't know why. I just couldn't. Yeah. Apart from the obvious song, Sun Doesn't Write, not Sun Doesn't Write, sorry, um, Solitaire Unraveling. Yeah, yeah. That, that is an awesome song. And Sun Doesn't Rise, but I had I bought two of their albums. I just, just couldn't get into them. Could not yeah. for the life of me. It's like Mudvayne. Took me a long time to get into them, and they mm. then released a third album that was crap. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but now going back to Deftones, even now I do love a bit of Deftones. That's probably one of the few bands from that kind of era that I will happily listen to and enjoy still. You know. Have you been keeping up with them? Because they're not new metal anymore, not by any no. stretch. That's why I was kind of uh, iffy already about saying it because they're not new metal, are they? No, yeah. they've got a sound that I can't really describe as Deftones. That's literally yeah. it now. And there's not much screaming anymore as such. They've gone very um, kind of metal dreamscape-y on the newest album. Very melodic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because, I mean, even though it was good at it, sometimes you felt that the new metal music didn't quite fit Chino Marino's voice as well as he wanted it to. Mmm. So... I like that in a weird way, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Contrast, you know. Deftones have done some... not bad albums, but less, less good uh, albums. Yeah. Um, Saturday Night Rest I didn't think much of. And... the album just called Deftones, I think it was, weren't much cop either. But everything else has been pretty much spot on and they're now sort of this mythical legendary band now which is weird considering that we grew up listening to them and I got into them around the time of My Own Summer come out I believe yeah same here yeah yeah I love that yeah no you had like a White Pony and um... White Pony will always be a masterpiece There's yeah no yeah. way to put it that album you can stick it on today and it will stand up against anything else you yeah, put on. Um, around the Fur or something? Around the Fur is the one with uh, my own summer. That, again, Bruce is an absolute masterpiece to me. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Uh, um, um, I've not actually listened to them for quite a while, but... You've probably missed a few albums then. <laughs> I like it. To, uh, I listen to the bits and bobs here and there and, you know, kind of keep up with it, but not, like, religiously listen to, you know. No, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't have that many bands that I religiously listen to anymore, but that's because, obviously, I'm trying to do the reviews and all that ones. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I have my few bands that I religiously listen to. I mean, I try to listen to a Fear Factory album. It used to be once a week, now once every two weeks to once a month. Um, along with Devin Townsend and Strapping Young Lad and I've got a few other bands that I've been getting into um, that I'm like actually that was really good I should listen to that so yeah but 
you know how big my CD collection is. So finding some yeah. of this stuff is nigh on ridiculous. Um, <laughs> All book there, man. Yeah, I mean, I've not listened to an Enslaved album in a while, and I really, really want to. So not to the latest album. Um, <coughs> what, In Times? Mm. I'll say that, you've probably got like a preview copy of the newest album that's not out yet, but... <laughs> no, I've got that In Times. Oh, dear. Um, I think I listened to that twice, and I think I'm the one who told you how good it was, and then... Nuclear yeah, Blast, mm. put you on their thing as well. Yeah. So. Oh, good, good album. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I was thinking, for me, it's still Weezo, best enslaved album. Yeah, uh, I can't quite, because as much as I like the kind of really heavier stuff, I really love it. I never now say it right, uh, Ritter. Ritter? At all. Yeah, uh, you know, I never gave that album much of a chance. Same with Rune. I only oh, listened to it oh. once. So it's a brilliant. I absolutely love it. I'm not a massive, you know, don't. Re I'm not really into progressive stuff, but that album is amazing. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, I don't think I could say a bad enslaved album. Um, I never kind of got into the. Um, Oxymora, some Oxymara, or what? Axiom, Effioka, something or other. Yeah, I never got into that album. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, I never really got into, is it Run? Run? Room, yeah. yeah. So that was one that I've only listened to once, I just never got round to yeah. it. Um, I love that, I, I love, you know, brilliant band, I love the band. Thing is, they tend to have a really annoying ability, uh, ability, sorry, to yeah. do two things to me, and they are tour when I've got no money, <laughs> and release albums when I've got no money. I'm really not in the mood to listen to Enslaved. Yeah, you, you've got to kind of be in that right frame of mind. To it's like any band, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I've. I had this happen with Soulfly keep bloody doing it to me as well. <laughs> yeah. So, um Sorry, ah oh dear, type me down so much. I should again, ah yes, let's type these down. Uh all deaf tones. Oh, so bad at keeping notes here and I um Terrible. Terrible. I really am, really, really am right there we go. Uh da 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 Right, yes. Uh da da I've just read it. I've got on like a uh, sort of sum up of the week's news, and most of it is stuff we spoke about in the last podcast. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I was looking at the news earlier and realised there's not really anything. I think anything of interest we really just spoke about. There's not been a massive amount in the news world. No, no. I mean, music. We we can talk about different things anyway. Um, oh. But. Let's go to something. Let's change topics up a little bit here. Um, what are some of the films you're looking forward to this year? Films. Yes. Um, I'm not really. The only things I really do kind of generally look forward to. I love the Marvel films. Yeah. And I'd have to say this for the sake of the other half. It is, of course, Star Wars at the end of the year as well. Right. <laughs> but yeah, those are the kind of two main things um looking forward to. Like they've got a few Marvel films out, they've got like of course oh four. <laughs> oh yeah, so Ragnarok this year, isn't it? Of course it is. <laughs> that and you'll probably get him um uh well, you'll get Doctor Strange in that one, by the looks of it. You know, I've not watched Doctor Strange yet, believe it or not. I've, it's just been like, they, every time I've gone along with that, I've seen cinema and just it never happened. Yeah, along with their, um, you know how perfect their casting was for uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man? Yeah. Uh, Dominic Bandersnatch, or whatever his name is. <laughs> Bandit Cumberbatch, he's he's yeah. perfect as Doctor Strange. Yeah, I like, got that impression. Boss on. And it is a very good film. Um, it's not 
the best Marvel film because it's gonna take a lot, a lot to beat Guardians of the Galaxy or Civil mm. War, but it's still it's definitely one of the better Marvel films. It's it's better than Ant Man. Yeah. Really, you like it? I, I liked Ant Man, but I didn't think it was amazing. I really liked Ant Man. I, I think the problem with Ant Man was because. Um, it was originally supposed to be done and directed by the and written by the guy who done um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And yeah. if you don't know him from that, you'll know him from doing Shaun of the Dead, At World's End, and um, Hot Fuzz. Yeah. Um, he also directed Spaced TV series, I think, as well. Um, and he had this amazing script, apparently, but the studio wouldn't go along with it. And just as they were about to start filming, he got kicked out. And I have a feeling they could have been some amazing, really unique version of Ant-Man film that would have come out with him directing. Yeah, I suppose. So. But I really like the uh, the one that came out the last few years before. What, Ant-Man? Yeah. Yeah, they've only had one so far. Yeah. No, I was trying to think when it came out. Was it last year or a year before? I can't remember. Either way, I liked it. But, oh, uh, like I said, I liked it. I just didn't think it was the best. So, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy as well. Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy is the best Marvel film for me. Brilliant! It's just, oh, um, it's not like brilliant. I mean, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy is is the perfect Marvel film for me. Very, very closely, very closely followed by Civil War, and Civil War is one that a lot of people were fifty fifty on. I've heard loads of people yeah. like it. I've heard loads of people be like, uh, no, I didn't think it was that good. So um, I'm 50, you know, I did like it. Did like it, but, yeah, I was, I'm 50-50 on it. It was all right, yeah, I did like it. I'm just going to say I did like it, but... <laughs> so you liked it then? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a good film, but I thought it got a little bit boring. Um, it was maybe a bit overly long but a lot of Marvel films started doing that recently I've found um, mm -hmm. but there is a lot a lot of comic and story to fit into it yeah I mean because um, it's in two parts obviously Infinity War is part of it as well and Infinity War itself is going to be in two parts so <laughs> yeah it's the overarching narrative is going to continue it's all a bit um, bit exploring Um Although, I will admit, they've actually found a Spider-Man who's not going to annoy me as much. I, I kind of ran me course for Spider-Man now. I know? think a lot of people have. I I find Spider-Man to be the same for me as Superman is. Boring. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I can't do Superman. He does, but he bores me too, so... I mean, Superman is... If you look at it as a, um, like a computer game character... Superman is a broken character. He's just too yeah. good. Therefore, it makes him boring. Yeah. Really, you've got to, every time, contrive a way for people to find Kryptonite. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, oh, sorry, of slight deviation from this. Um, two things have happened in the world of the new Batman movie. I was just about to, I was going to talk about Batman for you. Oh, right, okay, we'll go back to that in a moment then. Yeah. I'll let you lead that topic off. But yeah, I mean, Spider-Man, I've never liked the character. I've never understood why people do. He bores me, and his attempts at, like, just the character itself, his attempts at slightly forced one-liners after everything. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets on my pecs, somewhat. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... And the only reason I actually watched the first three Spider-Man movies was because it was the guy who done Evil Dead, and Bruce Campbell was in it. Kind of yeah. have to by law. <laughs> so anyway, what's happened with Batman then? See, Batman now. Love Batman, but overused now. It's done me head in the last film. You know, um, call it Bat related to Batman, like Suicide Squad. Oh yeah, yeah. See, I liked Suicide Squad myself. It was alright, but I'm fed up of people like obsessing over it. I'm not obsessed with it. My only yeah. my issue with Suicide Squad 
was the writing of and the direction of um I think of his name in a minute. Um the guy who played the Joker. They that's not the Joker. Yeah, he did my head in um the The laugh as well. That the no. <laughs> that's all I to say. Some of the direction they were going with with it, you know. Well, I can, but they've made the Joker just essentially a mob boss. I think the problem with the Joker is the kind of the bleeding that character dry, you know. There's that, and because we had such such a good representation of the Joker from Heath Ledger. Yeah, I think you can't beat it, can you? you I can't. can't that's why they went for a different idea of it, but they normalised yeah. him too much. It's the whole, you know. Although yeah, um, you can't beat Heath Ledger's Joker. But no, and I know a lot of people sort of moan about it, but I actually thought that the version of Harley Quinn was pretty much right. See, um, Harley Quinn, it's done me head in because every bloody girl out there wants to dress up like her and everything. It's just like, oh my God. Yeah, but that's been going on since the yeah. uh, 1990s Batman animated no. series. One of the best no. cartoons ever. <laughs> well, you know, you know, old school Harley Quinn, fair enough, but this, you know, that whole new version of it, she kind of put me head in a bit, you know, in the film, gotta admit. Um, uh, well, as a character, I mean, I liked it. It's weird though that they, she was in, um, if I remember rightly, she was in Dark Knight. Was she? Yeah, um, very, very quickly. You don't, if you did, don't know the backstory of Harley Quinn, you would have missed it. Literally, oh, they, no, yeah, I think I she remember. says, yeah, she's a, a backstory. Yeah, yeah, she does introduce, like, one of the doctors who's, um, yeah, while they've got the joke there, she says, Oh, hi, I'm Harleen Quinzel. Quinzel, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and like, obviously, we're all thinking, you know, oh, Harley Quinn's gonna be in the next movie, and then unfortunately, they couldn't do another film with Joker because, um, Heath Ledger sadly took his own life, so yeah. I have to wonder if the original version of Dark Knight Rises was Bane with the Joker and Harley Quinn. Yeah, maybe. And... It's like, was it... I forgot now which one it was. And they did like the, the new uh, Catwoman. It was like, what the hell? That's Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. I was like, that's not Catwoman. You know... No, they tried... I, they used their... Um, like bike goggles or something as her cat ears. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> you know, yeah. I remember the, the cat woman, and, you know, I feel like I'm terrible at remembering the names of the Batman film. You know, the, the, the one with the penguin in it and stuff. That Batman like... Returns. Uh, you mean the, um, I was going to say Tim Robbins then. Uh, Tom, <laughs> oh, what's his name? The guy who done Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Yeah. yeah. His Batman <laughs> movies were spot on. Yeah, it's so creepy. I mean, I used to be absolutely terrified of the penguin. When that it film is Danny out, DeVito, I can understand. <laughs> yeah, when that film first came out, I was pretty young. I can't, what was it, 93 or something? Uh, Early 90s, wasn't it? Is it? I think it was about 91, 92, because Batman, <laughs> the first Batman film was 89. Because I yeah, know I wasn't even, I was about seven. I, yeah, so yeah. I was pretty young, and I remember being absolutely petrified of, of I think my, my dad was watching it and yeah. I was I saw the penguin and it absolutely terrified me. I, I couldn't watch it for years. But that I mean, even now it gives me a shudder, you know. But that now is your version of uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is your version of Catwoman. Yeah. Yeah. I will fully agree with that. Catwoman was she is supposed to be a super thief, but even in the updated cartoons and the um comics I don't think they made her anything like what um, Nolan did with uh, Dark Knight Rises. Mm. I honestly don't think they did that. Um, but, as I said, I have a funny feeling that a lot of changes to the script had to happen because he might have already written most of the script and then obviously the whole thing with Heath Ledger happened. Yeah, yeah. So he had to change it, which is why Dark Knight Rises, although a good movie, doesn't quite hold together as well as the two previous Batman films Nolan did. I turn to face it all.